All right, I'm back at you with another hit. A right, low when this be edifying. This lesson is going to be based on um a rich man. When Yahweh was saying a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven, we're going to go into it. And low when this to be edifying, and we're going to go into the parable of um the needle in a camel's eye. Right, a camel not being able to go through a needle's eye. We're going to go into that as well. And low winning this to be edifying. So we're going to go to Mark. Right. This is Mark 19 and 20. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept. You know, go to verse 16. All right? And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? In other words, life forever. All right? What man, What should I do? Okay. And he said unto him, Why call this on me goods? There is none good but one that is the heavenly father. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Right? So this young man was asking, what do I have to do to be saved? Hmm? And Yahweh said, just keep the commandments. That's all. Hmm? Keep the commandments. Hmm? And he saith unto him, which Yahweh said, thou shalt do no murder. Right? Key thing. Okay, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy mother and father, father and mother, and thou shalt not, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? So the man he kept all these commandments, and it said, and he says. What I lack yet. So this shows you can keep all these different commandments. But be missing one thing. Your house says unto him. If that will be perfect. Go and sell that thou has. And give to the poor. Here we go now. Sell what you have and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. So sell your possessions. Sell what you have. Right? And come and follow me. See, this it just shows you you can think you're doing everything right and one thing could be missing. Mm -hmm. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Okay, key thing he had great possessions. Okay, so he, he was sorrowful, he didn't want to let go of it. When said you how to his disciples. Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Key thing. Hardly. Doesn't mean can't. Hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And it says, Baba Kisha. And again I say unto you, it is easier. Here we go. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And that's, it's not, that's not an easy thing for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. The eye of a needle would be... um. A passage, a gateway, a small door to, to the entrance out of the city, out of that town. So a camel would really have to squeeze in, it would have trouble, it'd be banging his head. So that's what it was in um in comparison to. A camel, right, going through the eye of a needle, right, which was a doorway, which are, which is an arched doorway, right, which was very, very, very slim for, for a camel to get through. And it says, check this out, Baba Kisha. Where was I? And it says, check this out. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle when a rich man to enter the kingdom of the heaven, of the heavenly father. So a camel can get through the eye of a needle, right? But it said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle when for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's not impossible, it's just rare. Because a lot of people, they have attachments to financial gain. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? Right? But Yahweh beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible with men. But with the Heavenly Father, all things are possible. Right? When answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. I was looking for this scripture yesterday. We've forsaken everything. And followed thee. 
What shall we have there for? Look, we forsake Peter said we forsook in everything. What are we gonna have in return? Right? And Yahweh said unto them, Verily, I say unto you, Rat ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when a son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. In other words, in the kingdom to come. Right? You were gonna sit on that throne. Right? Judging the tribes of Israel as well. Okay? And it says, check this out. And everyone have forsaken houses. So you've forsaken certain houses, you moved out or whatever. Right? Hold on just a minute. And everyone that's forsaken houses or brethren. Or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. So you're going to inherit everlasting life, man. Anything you've lost here, just know you're going to get it back. But many that shall be first shall be last, and they, those that be last shall be first. Here. So, if you live it up here, yeah, you could have your little stuff, but it just means in the kingdom, you're just going to be less. Right? So, the, the things we lose here, we're going to gain it in the, in the spirit, in the kingdom. Right? That's what that means. Okay? Lord willing. Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. Okay? So I want to go to Timothy's as well. Go to Timothy's. Baba Kasha. We're not missing out. See, the world wants to um, convince you. It's, that's the world, that you're missing out on something. Or well, should I say Satan wants to convince you? Right? I'm missing out on this. I'm not missing. What are you missing out on? What are you missing out on? You're out here, right? You see how people are living. You see how people are living. Just tell me, tell me, what are, we, what are you missing out on? What are you missing out on? Because from what I see, people ain't happy. People ain't happy. And more time, guess what? They're more invested in us. More of the time. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Let's go to Timothy's. If they're happy, why are they so invested in you? What you got going? Because they know what we got going is a beautiful thing. Right? And it is. Let's go to Timothy's now. This is First Timothy's. Six. And we could, we could go to six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. Nothing at all. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. You're not carrying nothing with you. Always remember, everything here is temporal. Right? And having food and raiment, let us there with be content. Right? So with food and raiment, we've got to be content. Right? Satisfying. Mm? But they that be rich fall into temptation... And a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. So those that are rich, they end up falling into so much different temptations. Right? So much. And it says, a many foolish and hurtful lusts. Right? It's the lust that gets them. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. I get fed up of people saying that. It's not money. The love of money. Is the root of all evil. Because what your people are willing to do. Any type of madness. To attain. That money. Right. And it says, check this out. For the love money is the root of all evil. 
which some have coveted after. Chased after it. So you got people that have chased after money. And now they're, they're no longer happy anymore. Right? They're no longer happy anymore because they've chased after the money. Okay. So we went to that now. Let's see if there's anything else, Baba Kasha. And they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. So you've got a lot of people, they pierce themselves through with many, many sorrows. They're miserable. And they're not, they don't, they're not telling you what these people had to do. They had somewhere down the line, they had to compromise. They're not telling you that they had to compromise themselves. And yeah, it does get bad. They have to do some dirty stuff. I'm telling you, casting couch, right? Okay. And it says, Baba Kishar, check this out. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But though, O man of God, flee these things, right? And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. So it says, flee them things, the covetousness, the money. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. We are also called and profess a good profession before many witnesses. Jump to verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world. Okay. And they that be not high-minded. So we don't want to be high-minded. And charge them that are rich in this world. Right. Nor trust in uncertain riches. But the living power. So we don't want to be trusting in uncertain riches. I've seen people with a lot of money. You think I haven't been around people with a lot of money? I've seen it. Right. Some of them, they've lost it. Some of them, this. You know, but it's not all about that. Right? Now, does it help if you got a bit of money? Yeah, of course. Right? But it's not all about that. And it says, check this out. No trust in uncertain riches, but the living power who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Woo. So we trust the living power, not riches, that giveth us all things to enjoy. Joy, all things. Right? They that do good, they that be rich in good works. That's ready with the richnesses. It's in the good works. Ready to distribute. So we've got to distribute these words, share it, willing to communicate, make sure we're communicating by these electronic epistles. Right? And it says, Baba Kishar. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. So this is what we're laying up. A good foundation. I keep saying this is going to pay off. You're already seeing it pay off. Well, I, I'm seeing it. you got to have vision. Within the truth. you said you got to have vision. Say it did like that. Whoa, some bro, some cold wind swept down my throat. See, say, Satan didn't like that. Satan just tried to mess up my throat. He just tried to choke me out. It's lucky about that. <coughs> mm -mm. See, the enemy doesn't want to hear these things, man. Maybe just a minute. And it says, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold an eternal life. So. This is the main thing and the parable of what is it? The needle going through a camel. A kind of camel walk through a needle. It's more likely that a camel can walk for the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means it's it's rare. It's rare. Okay. So Lord willing this was edifying. I'm gonna move on to the next lesson and then to the next time. Shalom. Shalom.